everybody this is green spirit welcome back to my channel today I wanted to go ahead and show you a craft that I'm making for my altar I decided I wanted to, to go ahead and change my altar up a little bit so I'm gonna be decorating some pillar candles to place on my altar uh, so basically what I have here are just some plain white pillar candles that I got from the dollar store uh, they're pretty self-explanatory. The only thing that I think you should be aware of is you always want to make sure that when you get a pillar candle that you try to get a, a candle that has the wick as close to the center as possible. Um, obviously if it's kind of more towards one side it can kind of um, deviate the flame towards the glass which is a little bit dangerous so I do try to recommend that you to try to find one of the candles that are like this. Um, I'm kind of going for a little bit of a white um, color scheme for my altar um, this time around. Um, I plan to put lots of candles out for the inbox celebration and so I thought that I'd put some um, white candles with some decorative elements. Um, additionally what you will need is I went to the dollar store and all these ingredients except for the Mod Podge which you will also need I got from the dollar store although I have seen Mod Podge at the dollar store just in small little containers um, but this is what you will need you will need some decoupage medium and then I thought that I'd um, find some doilies um, that would be helpful kind of reminiscent of a little bit of, of snowflakes um, Typically, Imbolc is a celebration of kind of a, a little bit of the coming spring um, about um, the ooze or the, can't pronounce that word, but essentially the female sheep being able to nurse their, their young at this time and a lot of the elements that are related to Imbolc relate to milk and that kind of a thing. Um, but for me in the area that I live it's still it's warming up but we're still getting snowfall um, here and there and so I wanted to make a very clean and white and snow kind of related altar with a lot of candles promising the light um, and warmth that is coming ahead so I wanted to go ahead and get some doilies you do not need to do this if you do not want um, to use doilies you can just use regular paper and cut it up into little snowflake shapes but I kind of like these when I saw them and of course they have little roses around them which as you know the rose is a symbol of my matron goddess so it kind of works out um, what I plan to do is kind of fold these maybe in like a quarter way or maybe even a little bit more cut a couple designs here in the center so that it opens and there will be um, some cutouts right here reminiscent a little bit of um, snowflakes additionally also at the dollar store I picked up some white tissue paper of course there was just plain white and there had other colors but I kind of like this one just because um, I've used this one before and I kind of like that it has little pieces of color and um, glitter in it which I think it's very um, I don't know very childlike very whimsical and very promising of the colors that will happen in spring so I will also be using that so without further ado I'll get started um, basically all this is pretty self-explanatory it's not too complicated again I'm going to take a doily I'm going to fold it first I'm going to uh, fold it in fourths and I'm going to make little cuts just a little cut right here and then I'm going to fold it again maybe this way And then I'm going to make another little cut. And of course, you know, this could be 
as intricate as you want it this will be up to you what kind of designs you want to cut into your doily so it looks like I'm I feel like it needs um, a couple of cuts on this end so I'm gonna go ahead and fold this back up there we go so here is my doily reminiscent of a snowflake and what I will do is I will cut four of those now this pack of doilies obviously was a dollar but I couldn't find just little small doilies um, like this it came in a great big pack with humongous doilies medium sized doilies and then these little guys um, so I just went ahead and got them I'll probably use the other doilies and other projects but I just thought that it was way too much <laughs> I didn't quite cut through. So I'll do that a little further in. Now I know that there are so many tutorials you can find online to make some very beautiful and intricate snowflake patterns, but I'm not looking for a whole lot of you know excess stuff I just wanted a little bit of that snowflake quality and I feel like the doily accomplishes that there's my next one and obviously I have four candles so I'm going to do this four times There's the next one. <clears throat> I think there's at least eight little doilies in the pack. So if you wanted to do more than four, you obviously could. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't mind if I cough a little. This one came out kind of cute because it has little hearts in it. Okay. So this again was just tissue paper that I cut into these kind of square and rectangle shapes. And what I'm just going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my decoupage medium and spread it on this candle. I'm going to then just attach the tissue paper to my candle with various coats of decoupage and um, tissue paper then on top of 
the tissue paper, I'm going to go ahead and add my little doily. So, here we go. And I do recommend that if you are using Nacopage for the first time, make sure that you get kind of um, a synthetic brush and one that um, is a little bit wide. Also, you probably will have to dedicate a brush to your decoupage um, because you don't want to ruin all your paint brushes. You can also use a foam um, a foam brush. So again, now I tried to remove um, this label, but I wasn't able to remove it and I didn't feel like putting this underwater but of course if you'd like you can certainly remove the label this is kind of a messy project so I do recommend that you have a napkin next to you now I'm going to go ahead and adhere my tissue paper And you might want to add a little bit um, more decoupage medium on top. And this dries clear, so you don't have to worry about it looking kind of funky. I love using decoupage me medium and um, tissue paper and adding different colors on top of each other because it gives a wonderful and beautiful effect. Um, if you've seen my grimoire or book of shadows video that I did last year um, there is a page which is my water page in which I use different colors of blue and white and even some of this um, tissue paper to create a layered effect that made it look very much like water and clouds and I really liked how that page came out and I do plan on doing a uh, Book of Shadows walkthrough at some point, but I'm just not quite there yet. I want to work a little bit into it more before I show it to you guys. Um, I had mentioned in a previous vid video that it looks very different to how my video was last year. And I want to kind of go into it in detail so um, but that's going to require its own video so as you can see you can just layer the different papers and the more you layer um, the more interesting and texturally that this becomes so really I mean you could just do this for any candle um, without having to add the doilies um, and you could you know put different kinds of color elements but I think it gives a really cool textural effect and if you don't want to do it in sheets like this you can also um, tear it up so it gives it a little bit of more of a jagged um, appearance not so straight in lines and you can do it just like that I'm gonna add a little bit more glue and I need to go buy some more decoupage medium because I use it so much in my book of shadows um, again I will go into my book of shadows in another video but it's kind of funny. I decided to go ahead and use my use decoupage medium in my book to seal my pages um, on pages that were done. And what it does is it creates a kind of um, waterproof and almost pleather-like um, effect. Um, there is a bit of tackiness and it makes it kind of um, loud when you open the pages but the more you open your book the less 
of that you will have and then your pages look protected um, from spills so you know if you're if you have spills um, occurring during ritual for whatever reason um, it doesn't affect it um, negatively you know you don't um, your ink doesn't run okay so I've decoupaged this tissue paper onto this candle and as you can see it looks kind of really cool and now I'm going to add a little bit more decoupage medium to this part of the candle I'm going to select my little doily and I'm going to place it on there and then I'm going to go ahead and add um, more decoupage medium to it. Now you could certainly, certainly um, use color doilies. That would be beautiful. You could watercolor these doilies. They are paper. So you could certainly add color elements to it. I think that would be absolutely lovely. But I am simply doing this, although I may, um, I'll see how I like it once it's nice and dry. And I may go back with maybe some silver metallic or white metallic paint and kind of um, brush it on here. So right now this is what it looks like. Uh, it's not... Um, as visually interesting as you would think because you can't really see it right now with the glue but when it dries it should look really wonderful so you can also if you feel like you have little bubbly areas you can use your finger to just simply squish them down or smooth them out So we're going to let this dry, and then I will show you what it looks like um, when it's done. Okay? Thanks. Okay, guys. So here I am back again. Um, this is basically what's come out of it. Here is one where I haven't added any paint to it yet. And now what I have done is I've gone ahead and poured some white uh, folk art metallic paint and some silver um, folk art metallic paint onto the Tupperware or little plastic lid so that I can use it as a little palette and now all I've done is I've mixed up a little bit of my white and a little bit of a silver painted over my doily and then I'm going back just with the silver and going in through the little holes of my um, cut out portions just to give it a little bit of definition. Now, obviously this is optional. I just wanted to go ahead and give this a little bit of a go. And then what I will do is I will also put it on the little holes of the doily itself. I'm not too concerned with it being um, perfect because I just want a little bit of definition and really when this candle starts burning down you're going to be able to see a little bit more of the contrast. So. Nothing too crazy. Now I'm going to go in with just my wet 
brush and just kind of smooth it over and then white. I know this is kind of weird, but I'm going to get a paper towel and I'm just going to blot it because I do just want a little bit of uh, texture. Just like that. And if you can kind of tell, it's got a little bit of a sheen now. And I'm just going to continue on with the rest of these and then I'm going to go ahead and decorate my altar and I might even take you along with that process. Okay, so we'll see each other in just a minute. Thanks. Okay everybody, so I've gone ahead and finished my pillar candles and I have gone ahead and placed them on my altar. This is how they turned out. And I'm really quite happy with how they turned out. They're very simple, very delicate. But very lovely. And I've gone ahead and placed them on what will be my in bulk altar. Again, I went with an all-white color scheme, minus my ameth well, ametrine crystal here in the middle. So since I've already mentioned the ametrine, let's start right here in the middle. Here I've got my Big Mama ametrine crystal, which is actually both basically a stone that is both citrine and, and amethyst. Um, if you were to look at it under a different light. I know I'm not sure if the camera is capturing it, but basically the bottom of it is purple in color like a normal amethyst, but the tips are like a citrine. And then I also have my cleansing selenite wand and I've got some mica and some merlite that I have found out in nature. Here I have a simple bowl of water in a white bowl and a found quartz crystal. My abalone shell with um, sand from an ancient seabed and my palo santo. Here I have a beautiful Madonna and child. And I also have a piece of selenite here with another um, piece of merlite. I have here a crescent moon with my quartz crystal sphere. Of course, my candles. Um, here there's a piece of kyanite, blue kyanite. A found white feather, another piece of quartz crystal, my big uh, milky quartz that I found last year out in the middle of a field, this beautiful statue of an angel, and this one really has quite a unique shape. Got a bit of an S shape to her, which is unusual and lovely. And then here I have a piece of celestite. Um, connects you with higher realms and the angel realm. And my crescent moon dish with some simple sea salt in it. 
and my altar cloth is two altar altar fabrics it's kind of a jersey fabric here that has a little bit of a shimmer to it and then this iridescent um, iridescent fabric on the top so basically that's it this is my embolk altar along with my four uh, pillar candles I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please hit that like button. If you really enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button to see any future videos from me. I hope you both, you all have a wonderful day and a wonderful inbox. Blessed be. Goodbye.